Okay, this is a follow-up to the first um, pendulum video. This is an application of a few practice problems. Now, in the previous video, we derived formulas for period and frequency of a pendulum using a few small angle approximations. Um, now we're going to maybe do some more problems with uh, pendulums. And uh, we take a look at the first problem, and it asks us to derive a formula for V max, so maximum speed of a pendulum as it's oscillating. So let's draw a quick picture of a pendulum, and it'll be at some angle theta with respect to its sometime in the future going to be at that position. Then it's going to, of course, go back up there, and I should draw that a little different. And of course, it swings back and forth. Now, where along that uh, that motion, this back and forth motion, is it going to be going the fastest? If we're looking at maximum speed, you can expect that the maximum speed is going to occur when it's at this lowest point. Now, when it's at this lowest point, all of its energy energy should be in the form of kinetic, whereas before it might have been in gravitational. So we're going to say that all of our gravitational potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy. And I'm going to go ahead and add the word max to both of these. The maximum GPE eventually turns into the maximum kinetic energy. We know this by the law of conservation of energy. So we can say that MGH has to equal one half mv max squared, where h would just really be the difference between those two. So how are you going to get the difference between those two? Well, when your pendulum is in this position here, I'm going to sketch the right triangle for you. And if I want to know this length, well, this is your length of the pendulum, but the side right here is the side that I'm concerned with, the side that I'm concerned with um, because I know that the difference between those two positions is going to have to be L minus whatever that leg is. So that leg is going to be um, L cosine of theta. So this right here gives us an expression for that, uh, that height. So height is going to be equal. Now let's go back over to where we're doing the algebra on the left here. So then I could say mg L minus L cosine theta equals one half m v max squared. And you want to solve for v max. So you're going to multiply both sides by two. Continue our work up here. And also you have m's on both sides, so that's gone. I'm going to just say that v max squared is going to be equal to 2 times g times, here we can factor out the l, I suppose, 1 minus cosine of theta. So then your expression for V max is going to be the square root of all of that. So 2GL, 1 minus cosine of theta. And that's your answer to this problem. Expression for V max in terms of L and theta. Let's look at another example. Um, you're asked, what's the period of a pendulum that's uh, 80 centimeters long, A, on Earth, and B, when it's in a freely falling elevator? I can't wait to do that. That's be interesting. First, let's look at A. Um, now, again, these approximations only work for small theta. But we do have 
an expression to represent the periodic motion of a pendulum. We found that um, the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. So this will be question A. So we just plug in our values because we have L and we have G, and certainly 2 pi is numerical. Just make sure that you're in meters, so 0.8 meters, divided by G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So then we get a period of about 1.8 seconds. A is done. Now how about B? B asks, what's the period of that same pendulum in a freely falling elevator? Let's draw the elevator. Let's make sure it's falling down. Draw a few lines. Sure. We'll make it 3D. Now, the concept here is um, if we go back to our equation in the previous problem, it has to do with this gravitational force component pulling it back to equilibrium if it's displaced. But if it's in a freely falling elevator, that accelerated reference frame is the same rate uh, of acceleration as g. So in that accelerated frame, there would be no reason to feel this sensation of gravity downward. So really, there should be no period at all. It, uh, it would be zero. It would never oscillate. So period equals zero. No simple harmonic motion. Another way to think of it actually is it could be infinity. The, the period is non existent, it doesn't oscillate. And you want to try one yourself. So go to the next one. Press play when you're ready. Um, this is the, um, it's a pendulum problem with length 0.76 meters, mass of 365 grams. It's released at an angle of 12 degrees to the vertical. What frequency does it vibrate? And that's question A. And what is the pendulum speed when it passes through the lowest point of its swing? And what is the total energy stored in the oscillation, assuming no losses? Give that one a try and then check your work when you're done. And here's your solutions. <laughs> 